Hello and welcome. Introduction. In this video, I want to discuss how to switch on the RGB LED using the SW1 user switch. Okay, so let's remind ourselves where the RGB LED and the user switch are located. So here is the schematics of the T, uh, Tiva C uh, launch pad board taken from the Tiva C series TM4 C123G uh, launch pad evaluation board user guide, uh, page 19. And so let's take a look at the RGB LED first. So the red LED or LED underscore R that's connected to PF1, that is port F bit one. And then the RGB uh, blue LED or LED underscore B that is connected to uh, PF2. And then the green uh, LED or LED underscore G that is connected to uh, PF3. Now the user switch uh, SW1, uh, which is the one that I'll be using, is connected uh, to PF4, that is port F, port F bit 4. And user switch 2, USR underscore SW2, that is this one here, that is connected to PF0. Now, um, so let's take a brief, let's take a closer look at port F. Right, what I've done here is I've redrawn port F here, and th these are the, the bits of port F. So bit zero, as uh, mentioned earlier, that is connected to the uh, USR underscore SW2, that is the user switch two. And then bit one is connected to the uh, red LED, that is LED underscore R. Bit two is connected to the blue LED, that is LED underscore B, and bit three is connected to the green LED, that's LED underscore G, and then bit four, that is connected to user switch one or USR underscore SW1. And this is the switch that I'll be using, or this is the bit that we should be watching out for later on in the program. The program. So in this part of the video, I'm going to walk you through the program that is used to switch the RGB LED on. So let's start off with the main program. So here is the starting point or starting part of the program. And where in this part here of the program, I define the registers used. Uh, meaning I assign the appropriate addresses to the re registers. And here uh, I have a mask, uh, which I gave it a value of one zero, uh, more on this uh, later on. So I assign this value to this variable called port FB4 mask, all right? So here, uh, more as I said earlier, so more on this uh, in a few moments. So here I define an area where the code is stored, and these are all the uh, attributes. Here, export is a directive that would uh, says that it will make this symbol uh, underscore underscore main uh, visible or available to the linker and other modules. Entry here, this as the name suggests, this is the entry point of the program. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to highlight this register. Uh, this is the uh, pull up select register for port F. Here I call it GPIO underscore port F underscore PUR underscore R. Uh, more on this in a few moments. And here is the start of the main program. 
And here is the uh, symbol underscore underscore main. And PROC here is the procedure indicating the start of the procedure. BL uh, set for F that will branch to the subroutine called set for F. More on this uh, subroutine later on. So here uh, I have an LDR, uh, R1, comma, equal GPIO underscore for F underscore data underscore R, which has did, which is been defined earlier, which has this address. So we load this address, this value into R1. And this instruction LDR, uh, R0 comma square bracket R1, basically it will read the data that is stored in the address uh, pointed to by R1. Now R1 is pointing to here because we loaded into R1 earlier. So uh, this instruction will load whatever that is stored at this address into R0. And here we have a uh, two new instructions that I have not been not have which I have not used before. So let's take a closer look. So TST R0, comma hash uh, port FB4 mask. Remember this was being defined earlier, it has the hex value of one zero. So what does TST stand for? TST stands for test bits. So basically, this instruction would take the value zero, uh, hexa one zero. You, when we translate that into binary, this is what we get. So that is the mask. So we take this uh, value, this mask, and the instruction will perform an N operation with the contents of R0. All right, so if these two bits are set to a one, the result would be this because uh, these two, because it's an AND, A and D operation, this bit will be set to a one. That's the result. And this will affect the zero flag. The zero flag or the Z flag will be set to a one. Next, we have the BEQ instruction. This will is a branch instruction to this uh, subroutine called turn on LED. BEQ stands for branch if 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 equal. Again, let me repeat again. Branch if equal. So the branch will only occur if the Z flag is set to a one. So what is the Z flag or what is the zero flag? Now, in the Cortex M processor, flags such as the N flag, negative flag, zero flag or Z flag, the carry flag or the D flag or B flag or the overflow flag, or the Q flag, which is the DSP overflow and saturation flag, are all contained in something called the application program status register, which is part of the program status register shown up here. So this part that is in the uh, red dotted box, that is the APSR or the application program status register. So let me repeat myself, the APSR is part of the program status register. And we're coming back to the main program. So this next three instructions here. Uh, so basically this instruction LDR R1 equals GPIO underscore or F underscore data underscore R that has the value of uh, 400253FC that has been defined at the beginning of the program as mentioned earlier. So then this 
MOV instruction or MOV R0, comma, hash uh, 0, 0 hexa. Basically, this instruction will copy this 0, 0 into R0, and then it will store uh, the uh, contents of this into a register into an address pointed to by R1, which is pointing to this address. Uh, basically, the purpose of these three instructions is to turn the red LED off. And then finally, we have this B loop that will branch. This is an unconditional branch back to this part of the program. And the E and D here is end of procedure. All right. Or end of the subroutine. Subroutines. Now, the first subroutine is the initialization subroutine. So, if you are new to this channel, please check uh, video 85. Uh, controlling RGB LED using ARM Cortex M4 assembly language. Uh, for if you check out this video, the details of this uh, subroutines are explained uh, in this video. Uh, please refer to the link in the description. Uh, but here in this video, I will briefly go through the subroutine. So. Uh, this is the start of the subroutine uh, with PROC. Uh, this is for the procedure, so indicating the start of the procedure or subroutine. So this uh, instruction, the first three instructions here, basically enable the clock for port F. All right, and these four NOP or no operation instruction. Basically, they are there to allow time for the clock to stabilize. And then here we program uh, the uh, AFSDL, that is the alternative function select register, so that the port is used for GPIO operations. Here is the digital enable register being programmed or set the uh, port F for digital input output function. And then this one, these three instructions here basically will set the direction, reg uh, direction register uh, for port F to output mode. Or rather these three bits here to output mode. And here is the continuation of the set port F subroutine. Um, so these three in instructions enable port F bit for internal pull up resistor. So let's take a closer look at the uh, pull up resistor. So uh, register 15, which is, which is the GPIO pull up select register, GPIO PUR, uh, with, with an offset of um, 510 hexa. So the uh, GPIO PUR register is the pull up control register. So when a bit is set, a weak pull up resistor on the corresponding GPIO signal is enabled. Now this is taken out from the uh, data sheet, uh, the TM4C123 GH6PM microcontroller data sheet, page 677. All right, so let's take a closer look. So the internal pull up resistor basically, uh, uh, what I've, I've drawn this here uh, in gray. So this represents the internal pull up resistor. Um, basically enable the microcontroller input pin to be pulled up. So this is the input pin to be pulled up to a logic 
level high, usually VCC, when no external signal is driving the pin. Now this resistor is integrated within right, the microcontroller and can be enabled or disabled via software configuration, which is what we are doing. We uh, enable the pull-up resistor uh, using these three lines of code. All right, and then finally, this uh, instruction in BXLR that is branch indirect basically is used to return the uh, back to the main program or the calling program. And here, END uh, and uh, P that is the uh, indicator to end the procedure or end the Subroutine. Turn on LED subroutine. So uh, when the push button switch is pressed, this subroutine will be called. All right, just let's go back to the main program briefly. So here in the uh, main program, these two instructions uh, that we have discussed earlier basically check the uh, push button switch when the push when the push button switch is pressed the program will branch to the turn on led subroutine all right which is this subroutine here and the subroutine begins with the turn on led uh, prop here that's the indicator uh the start of the uh, procedure or subroutine and these three instructions basically uh, will turn on the red LED. All right. And this GPIO underscore port F underscore data underscore R that has been defined in the beginning part of the program and it has this uh, value uh, 40025 3FC hexa. All right. This is, which is the address of this uh, port F data register so this three instruction is responsible for turning on the red led and here bxlr basically that would uh, return the control back to the main program endp here is end of procedure all right so indicating the end of the procedure and end indicates the end of the entire assembly program demonstration now for this demonstration you will need the tiva c series launch pad board connected to your desktop or laptop okay so we are here in the um Kyle IDE and I have uploaded the code here. So let me just briefly go through the code. So here I define the registers with all the appropriate addresses. Then I have defined the uh, port F mask uh, to be used with the user uh, switch SW1. Here I define the code with all its attributes. Here I have the export of the uh, uh, symbol underscore underscore main. This is the entry point of the program. And here we have uh, the main program. So it starts off with the prop PROC, then branch to the subroutine set port F, which is here. Come, I'll come back, I'll come to this in a minute. So here we first uh, is to read in the data from the uh, port F uh, where the switch is connected. Check the uh, the switch whether it's pressed or not. If it's pressed, then it will branch to the turn on LED. Uh, if not, it will turn the LED off. In this case, I've chosen to turn the green LED off. And then here we branch back to loop. To, so this one will keep looking at the switch or keep checking the switch. If the switch is closed or pressed, 
then the green LED comes on and here is the indicator of the end of the uh, procedure or main program right let's go down to the uh, the set port F subroutine so this is the start of the uh, setup of initialization of the of port F so here uh, we enable the clock for port F then this for no operation instruction is allow the clock to stabilize then here we define that the uh, port F to operate as a GPIO uh, port uh, by setting the alternative function select register then here is the uh, digital enable part that will enable port F to perform digital IO function then here is the data sorry the direction register of port F all right and then here we have uh, the uh, enable of the pull up resistor of port F and here BXR will then branch back to the main program all right uh, and here is the end of the uh, setup procedure or initialization procedure okay so here is the turn on LED subroutine that is mentioned earlier so when the switch is uh, when the switch is pressed it will then branch to this subroutine which is here and basically uh, this is set up to turn on the green LED and here indicates that the end of the uh, procedure or subroutine and here signifies the end of the entire assembly program all right so let's go to project build the target we have no errors no warnings so we go to this uh, wait uh, right so the camera is ready so when I click download this will go off for a while so uh, programming is done verify okay let me bring the camera back up now I need to do a reset so I'm going to hit the reset button here and then later on I'll use the user switch SW1 to turn on the LED so let me just hold on to the board press reset now I will then press this user switch and watch the LED oh right now it's blue oh yeah uh, sorry about that um, what I've done here is I have set the uh, LED for blue LED 04 is for blue all right but anyway let's let's press it again press on press on and press on all right so let's change this to zero two zero two is the red led so let's save it uh, build the target no errors no warnings download it to the board it's very thick verify okay bring the camera back up press reset and then press the SW1 switch and we have the red LED press red LED press red LED press red LED now uh, let's change this 08 so that would be the green LED so save it build it download it's done verified press reset all right then user button sw1 green LED comes on press it again green LED comes on press it again green LED comes on. all right so much for this demonstration okay that's it for this video thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.